Good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining us in this webinar to talk about DOMA, those online monitoring for air crews. I am Alban Simone Röhrich. I've been working for marketing in the business unit Pute Fuel since six years now and will be your host. Before we get started with the webinar, we have a few housekeeping items that we need to go over. The webinar will be approximately 45 minutes, including 30 minutes for presentations and 15 minutes for questions. Please be aware that we are recording so that we may share this content at a later date. Today, we will be utilizing the chat feature. If you go to the bottom of your screen, you will see more options. You will need to click on chat. With the pull down menu, please select all panelists. You may send your questions during or at the end of the presentation and our speakers will answer them live at the end of the webinar. So at Formatum, we like to start each meeting with a safety message. Whether on foot, by bike or by car, it's important to be cautious and ensure good personal visibility while on the road, especially at night. Many accidents are avoidable if you follow a few simple tips. If driving a car or bike, make sure your lights are working properly. For pedestrians, it is recommended to wear luminous and bright clothing with reflectors. Please stay safe. With that, we will move along into today's topic. Let me now introduce our two speakers for today. Our first speaker is Lars Ackermann. Lars is physicist and joined Framatome GmbH in 2009 as engineer for radiation protection and neutron fluence. Since 2017, Lars is Framatome expert for nuclear physics. In 2021, he took over the group lead for the PWR core design group in the export market. And since the start of the DOMA project in 2019, Lars has been the DOMA project manager. Our second speaker ready to answer your questions uh, during the Q&A session at the end of the presentation is Claudius Krasnick. Claudius is a nuclear energy and process engineer and joined Framatome GmbH in 2000 as a fuel sales and project manager for Switzerland and the ne Netherlands. Since 2017, Claudius is senior manager of fuel sales for Scandinavia and also the sales responsible for the development of the DOS online monitoring for air crews project. So let's talk about DOMA now. Lars, the floor is yours. Thank you, Alban, for this introduction. And welcome, everybody, to our webinar on DOMA. Um, yeah, just a second. I give you the right to present. Yep. So when we speak about those online management for air crews and about air crews, we think about flying. And the first thing of flying we are thinking is trust. We have to trust that everybody is doing a very good job. We as a passenger, that the air crew is doing everything right. But also the air crew depends on the work of a complete team to do this complex job. So for an example, when the pilot comes in the morning and he checks the reports of the engineering team for the uh, engine of the airplane, he trusts that they did the job right. And so it is, is it with all the other topics too. So flying is a big job, a big teamwork, and everybody commitment is required to do this, to ensure safe flying. So trust and commitments ensure safety, health, and we want to have control. Flying is a very complex topic and control is something we require to ensure, to believe in all these points. And the big question when we think about radiation is, do we not want the same in this manner? And of course, we also want to have it. But health and dose, it's a very abstract topic. Irritation, you cannot see. You need something to detect it. It's in value, and you have to get into models to understand what this value means. 
In principle, irradiation is a natural existing thing on the ground and also on the sky. But in the sky, you have the irradiation due to cosmic radiation. And depending on the altitude, your dose rate is increasing. And for airplane, shielding is not possible. You cannot think about a lead shielded uh, airplane flying um, a long distance. So you have to incorporate the dose. And this depends on the time and the amount of flights you have in the year. So for air crews, whose job is to fly approximately every day, this is a very big topic. So we can see this here on an example. Depending on the height of mountains or on the altitude of airplanes, the dose rate is increased. And now, depending on the duration of the flight and the quantity of your flights, you get a collective dose, or uh, integrated dose value. And now let's compare these values. For air crews, this individual average annual dose value is even two times higher compared to nuclear industry, where you think automatically about irradiation. And when you see here the picture, the amount of people working in this industry is even higher. So for us, this was a big surprise that every day people are irradiated that much. So it's part of the job. And now I come back, flying is trust. But when you fly and want to trust, you ask, okay, how depends the dose rate? So first of all, it depends on the route. If you have a long distance flight along the equator, the dose you collect is rather low compared to a same time consuming flight uh, in the area of the poor region. And then again, the question, how often you fly the route on the pole direction or on the equator direction? And for pilots and the company behind, it's always the question on the business. How can we do it faster? How can we consume less fuel? But the reminding question is, what effect has it on the dose? What is the annual value you get at the end? So let's pick up one more example on the altitude. Here we have a short distance flight from Paris to Helsinki. It's approximately the same flight route, but the altitude is 700 meter in difference. Flight time is maybe comparable, but the dose is increased by 17%, while the fuel is by the rule of thumb 2% less. And now the big question about an abstract value like the dose is, what does it mean to have 17% more? And this understanding is required to, under, to, to go ahead, to commit, to fly higher, to optimize your flight route. And the question is how? And again, we come back, it's a part of the teamwork. The commitment to go into a plane and knowing that there is irradiation is a commitment on trust, a trust into air crew dose care. And this means, first of all, you have to understand the value you get. You must be able to control your value. That means not only access it, but also to play a little bit. What is the effect by changing the altitude? Or what is the effect when you fly different flight routes? And of course, it requires a dose optimization. If you commit to fly higher or more flights on the pole region because it's required by the, your business, then you want to be sure that somebody takes over the responsibility to optimize the next flights that your dose will not increase much more so that all the pilots get a new um, dose at the end and also the cabin crew. So you see again, it's teamwork. And the teamwork where you can trust in the air crew dose care, it's a motivation and a commitment. It's a way for flight route optimization and at the end, it is also the key to reduce fuel cost. It's no possibility to start with the last bullet point if you are not working together with your team. So this is how air cool dose care should be. And what is DOMA now? Let me introduce you the feature of DOMA. Well, the first feature is rather clear. We want to calculate the post flights and to see how the dose is increased over time and getting a value, what is your current dose level? But you also want to have a prediction. Where will you be, for example, at the end of the year? 
what is the current uh, the, the first of behavior depending on your scheduled flight and also if some flights may be changed you want to see this update directly here this is the way how you can control your values for pilot it's an ordinary job that they check their flight routes and that they can control what happens if they do another flight route in the same way Numa enables them to check what is the effect on the dose for this flight. So flying a little bit higher or flying a little bit lower in altitude. And this gives you transparency. A transparency, what is the effect of a decision or a possibility how you want to fly. And this uh, enables you to understand your value and to see what happened. And what happened is the necessary input for those optimization. And this is now the team behind. We all know that as the flight scheduler who has to um, organize the flights and who is staffed on each plane. So coming from the individual dose, he now gets the input for all the air crew members. And then he has a target as an orientation, a limit. Maybe the limit for a medical check, for example. And he gets a distribution how many air crew members has a, have a low dose at the end of the year and which one will have the most highest dose. And now it's his job to organize that the people who have high dose are changed to the, with the people who has a low dose at the end of the year. Doma brings him the list of names so that he directly can do his job without additional effort. And the dose will be unique for all air crew members. And this is something you can now see on your mobile when the dose at the end of the year is reduced due to an optimization, for example. So if you commit to higher dose for an, due to an altitude, for example, then he directly see the change, reacts, and you can see the modification on your mobile. What are additional DOMA features? Of course, everything is automated and digital. The documentation, the data transfer to authority. It's cloud-based, so it's 24-7 available. That's the data, the information, and all additional service behind. And this will fill all authority requirements, including future adaptations. And how does it look? I said it's a cloud-based system. And inside this cloud, it's not only the DOMA features, it's a license code behind, and this is AppCode from the Helmholtz Institute. The data exchange is automated. So every time the air company changes the route or the staffing of a plane, DOMA updates the data automatically and all the data is always current, uh, uh, in just in time available. Also, if some things change, the recalculation is done automatically. For example, new physics data or an update of the flight route. And of course, all this system is compliant to European General Data Protection Regulations. By this, DOMA improves today's rotation protection. And we asked the authorities, what is their impression? So the Luftfahrt Bundesamt in Germany told us, DOMA is a very good approach to manage those distribution, actual and future requirements. And in Switzerland, in principle, a tool to optimize those exposure on air crews is desirable. So you see, the authority feedback is very good. And now you asked, who is Framatom? Who is behind DOMA? Framatom is your partner in rotation protection. We have experienced nuclear experts in more than 250 nuclear facilities. So radiation is our daily work. A typical project dose is one sievert. Of course, in a nuclear facility, you can apply all the alarm principles, which may be not possible for airplanes. That's why you see this factor of two in the dose for individuals. Nevertheless, our feedback from our projects with our employees is that the awareness of every single employee ensures their commitment, motivation, and current project success. Without them, you cannot do anything. And now, 
we want to offer you the complementary service in rotation protection on demand. So let me summarize your benefits. With DOMA, you get a tool to make dose and flight route and altitude optimization. You generate the input automatically for the flight scheduler for dose optimization. And you ensure that the air crews are below thresholds or limits like for medical checks. And you fulfill all authority requirements. So dose control by DOMA ensures air crew care. And this is resulting in trust and motivation for economical commitments. Let's look again on this picture. The rule of thumb, if you increase the altitude, you have a chance to reduce your fuel cost. So dose optimization is a chance to save up to 2% of annual fuel. I hope this gives you an impression what DOMA is capable and what can be your benefits. If you want to contact us, you can find a summary here in the QR code on the product sheet or directly send us a mail where the email address is given here. And now I want to thank you and switch back to Alban for the question and answer session. Thank you very much, Lars, for your presentation. So, um, as you said, the question and answer session is open, so please feel free to send all your questions in the chat. And we will start with the first question. So, um, how is data protection ensured, for example, location of server system? Yeah, we have suppliers which ensure that the servers are located in Europe and they all apply to the rules we have in Europe and the data protection we know in Germany. Okay, thank you. Another question. Are there been any incident in the past which has caused an attention to DOMA now? An incident? Well, we found it out that uh, surprisingly that the dose of air crews is that high. Uh, I showed you in nuclear facilities the dose of people working there is rather low. Uh, there are people who well, worked a long time and have no have really zero dose. And for airplanes, you directly collect that much. And for us, this does not require an incident. We think that everybody should be able to have a control on his dose. It's a personal value like other fingerprints we are aware, not only after a corona phase. Thank you. Another question. Is an integration planned to systems like Lufthansa Netline or Jeppesen? Well, we assume that we need two to three months to introduce the system into an airline system, which is, of course, the technical interface to ensure that everything is running, uh, but also that the HR um, contracts and, and, and showing that um, the system can be applied by the employees are in place at the time of introduction. Another question. Um, who is responsible for flight, flight altitude? Only pilot? Well, what we learned is that um, the uh, sky is, uh, you have a lot of flights in the sky, so you get a corridor. And of course, you have to think which corridor is maybe the best you can get for vessel conditions, for example. But at the end, it's the pilot. Yeah, you you have to ensure that yeah, you fly the best route. So if you have some some effects during the flight, like uh, turbulences, then you cannot stay in this height. Yeah. So of course he reacts and he can check, maybe in a limited manner, but may depending on the the traffic, he can also ask to modify the fly height. Our business has peak time during which we do not have a time to do dose management with high priority. Does DOMA block our high priority tasks? No, it does not block high priority tasks and peak time. So it's enabling you to make a good planning 
And starting with a good planning, no turbulence can bring you out of this system. So in peak time, you concentrate on what is necessary. And at the end, you have directly the update on the effects on your peak time and can react and come back to a well-organized system and those optimization. And then you can gladden out what was maybe in the peak time a little bit um, not perfect, but acceptable. Thank you. Um, our airline has already several portals. How can we prevent to generate more tools with different accesses? Well, uh, this is something we all well aware in, in different industry um, systems. And we are able to apply also the entrance interface by the airline and to integrate DOMA in a way that for the user, the effort to log in is rather low. Uh, quite a long question. So DOMA only gets its fuel value when it is used by airlines. Um, it is surely interesting for myself as a pilot, but the individual cannot use all features. Can I update it on when there was a change of route or altitude? Well, in principle, the DOMA couples to the, uh, the airline system. So the, well, the precast is maybe uh, depending on the input, which is gathered, what I said, if there is some vessel data already applied, then the prediction becomes better or, or worse. But at the end, the flight route of an airplane is well known. And based on that, DOMA can calculate the real dose. And this is then fixed and archived inside DOMA. Thank you. In case of uh, solar flares, how are they applied in DOMA? Well, the dose calculation code is uh, licensed. And of course, uh, solar flares has then a discussion in the community for such events. And coming back with the well, estimation, what is the effect of such a, a solar flare, we can correct then the dose. It's always a, a past correction. But um, independently, how complex this answer would be, we are capable to manage it in DOMA. Thank you. Um, have you a YouTube channel? Yes, Framatom has a YouTube channel and uh, this video will also be then stored there so you can watch it again. And we have also okay. Twitter and LinkedIn, yeah, just for information. So please feel free to send your questions. Um, Uh, okay, uh, I another one. I didn't understand completely how the fuel saving works. You usually save fuel by higher altitude. Yes, we well, make here the examples by the rule of thumb that if you increase the altitude by 300 meter, your fuel consume is reduced by 1%. Well, how complex ever you can calculate this uh, fuel consumption. At the end, the employee must commit to save. And for that, he needs trust. Uh, and this is something we know from our project too. If you can work in a transparent way, take um, recognizing all the roles of your employees and have something to show that you are working on this and they are not alone with this topic, they can commit. So this is the basic. And independently, if you have a higher altitude or a new um, airplane, so we know in, in the last years there was a discussion about the safety of some airplanes. If you have not, if you speak about the, with the people about the topics and make it transparent, they can commit to do everything which is required to, to reduce costs and so on. But for this, you, you need the trust. That is the entry point always in, in every industry. So please feel free to send your question in the chat. I don't see any questions anymore. So it's your chance <laughs> to ask your last questions in the chat directly to our speaker. No. Okay, I think 
that's it for today. I don't see any questions anymore in the chat. So I would like to say thank you very much uh, for the great, great questions today. So uh, feel free to send all the questions if you may have questions later to our um, speaker. You have the, 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 the contacts here in the presentation. Um, thank you again to all of you for attending our webinar. Uh, you will be receiving a survey as you leave the event today. We would appreciate your feedback. If you could take just a few minutes to fill that out, so we might improve upon future webinars. Last but not least, thank you very much, Lars and Claudius, for your support to this webinar and for your participation in the question and answer session. So have a nice day. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye.